Welcome to the 159th episode of News Dump, where we run through the hottest topics in the Lewis County news scene and discuss. It's Thursday, October 5th. I'm local man Aaron Van Tyle, joined by Chronicle Editor-in-Chief Eric Schwartz, Chronicle Assistant Editor Isabel Vanderstoop, and Chronicle Photo Editor Jared Wenzelberger. We're joined in spirit by sponsors Summit Funding and The Roof Doctor. And we were going to take this week off, but by popular demand... Surprise! We have decided against it. We have been swayed. Pretty you cool. were swayed. Pretty, you, pretty, you were the reason we weren't doing it. <laughs> and then someone complimented you or something, asked where the podcast was, and you were you like, think the only thing I'm that important. motivates me is... <laughs> <laughs> what, will the, what will the people do if they don't get a news dump this week? I know, it's true. Anyway, uh, yeah, I've been busy, but it's no big deal. Um, preambles, we have several. I did two. I just put here that the Apple Harvest Festival is in, on Alaska this weekend. It actually technically starts tonight. Good know, festival. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'd say the October's best festival if they don't do, uh, uh, what was it? Oktoberfest? No, I was thinking Winlock. <laughs> Freedom Ween. Freedom oh, Ween. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Let Freedom Ween happen. Please. Blast from the past. Did Freedom Ween <laughs> actually ever happen? We received zero confirmation that it yeah. ever actually happened. So. Remember how they were going to do a mask burning? Yeah. Oh, throwback. But I don't know. I think Jared went down there and didn't see anything, right? Something like that. Yeah, something like I that. Remember. I didn't see any column of smoke from the burning masks. Run it back. So. I like it. Like two Fourth of July's. Uh, yeah. Wait, nothing. but what about, like, Bukota? Doesn't that count as a festival? Oh, that's true. Like, yeah. Super yeah. yeah, that's really good. Yeah. They do cool stuff. That's true. I, I mean, to be honest, no offense on Alaska, but I would I would sooner put that at the no, top just because... No, 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 no. You don't, you don't think that Boo Coda <laughs> goes ahead of on Alaska? No, no, no. The Apple Harvest Festival is one of the best festivals. I just, I just feel stuff. like... Bu- got them in link. And- I get that. It's just that, like, Boo Coda is... It's it's Bukota's only thing. I love Bukota. I think it's great. Yeah. And it but that's spread over a month. That's so true. they've got stuff every Saturday. That's but true. I guess it's apples to oranges. Yes, there you go. It's wow. pumpkins to corn. That was really good. Or you could have said apples. Yeah, yeah that's pumpkins. a good point. <laughs> I could have, but I didn't think of that. And then I just <laughs> I I just noted that uh we've got best of Lewis County coming up here pretty quickly. Jared and Isabel have been busting out the photos of the winners and finalists. If your if your photo has been taken, it doesn't mean you won. First, second, and third place. Yeah. How many photos mm-hmm. have you taken in the last? Way too days? many. Like hundreds. It's your job. What are you talking about? Way too <laughs> many. It's That's all you do. But it's a heavy <laughs> f- poll when you're trying to get one for. And I've been every shooting sports finals. for plus, you guys. Plus, he was told. I think that we again. That's your job. <laughs> Not all day. Hey, we're looking for another photographer. That's another good preamble. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Any local photographers around? Photojournalists. What do you think about that, Jared? I'm all for it. We're gonna put him in the office with you, though. You guys have to work opposite sides <laughs> of the same desk. <laughs> Aaron? No, you guys have to oh. be like, you have to stand back to back and get taped together. And then that's how you have to go on assignments. I think yeah, he has to live angles. in the photo hole, our old dark room. That is where the new photographer will have to go because we're cool. running out of space. The Taylors have revamped our, our newsroom staff. I forgot that Aaron to build doesn't upon think it. that's a viable career option. Oh, the... Um, yeah, I think it's viable. The little, the little area with the microwave. Yeah. That spot. I yeah, that might work. Didn't somebody have a desk back cold. there at one point? Yeah, Mike the, did, and then he moved. Well, that was the oh. old sports department. The, uh, the yeah, years for ago. A while, yeah. Not in my day. Uh, anyways, I was saying all that to say the big uh, award show is going to be at five p.m. five p.m. October eighteenth at McFiler's Theater. Uh, that is a Wednesday. Two Wednesdays from now. Are you, are you going to go to that, Aaron? Uh, 5 p.m., McFiler's and Shayla. Yeah, I'll be there. We yeah. got to take a photo for best podcast. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've already got the trophy. We have to re-up our annual photo. Yeah, I mean, I've got a meeting Wednesdays at 6.30, right? Like a block away. So that works perfectly for me. Excellent. Uh, shall we get to the news? We shall. And Schwartz wrote the notes this week. Congratulations. You're they, welcome. They... So hot right now. What oh. is that? I was trying to get the uh, I'll take it, man. I guess the good. applause in there, and I hit the wrong button. Yeah, That's the Zoolander. I'll say. <laughs> we use it a lot in the sports dump. <laughs> um, all right. Jared first... just doesn't know what happened because he doesn't have that phone. Have either oh, of you yeah. even watched Zoolander? <laughs> no, I haven't. See, that's 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 the problem with yeah, this generation. It's just yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's uh, the problem. Damn Zoomers. <laughs> First up, survey finds visitors to Lewis County have disproportionately high income. Lewis County's tourists are richer than its residents, or at least the ones who aren't elected officials giving themselves raises. Got that one in oh, early, God. didn't Zing. I? <laughs> uh, the poor are planning ways to acquire more money from the rich as they travel through Lewis County, breathe our air, and look at all our cool stuff. The initial results from a Discover Lewis County survey that will help craft a Lewis County-wide tourism plan found that visitors to the county tend to have a higher income than residents. Roughly a quarter of the visitors to West Lewis County live in a household that makes more than $150,000, which outpaces the county demographic of 8.3%. What? By 8.3%? Yeah, don't, don't read too much into it. Just keep going. According to a report prepared by Arnett Muldrow, a consulting firm. Who hired the consulting firm? Uh, I believe that would be the Alliance of Lewis County, Economic Alliance yeah, of Lewis County. Yeah, they run the Discover Lewis County. Uh-huh. And Maybe so I if think we that- got rid of both of those things and gave the taxpayer dollars back to our residents, our income would be higher. That's an idea. And just, well- you were uncertain there. <laughs> a quarter of the visitors in Lewis County make over $150,000 a year, whereas only 8.3% of residents make that amount. Of okay. Oh, I get what that means. Okay. Yeah. I, I, All right. I understand. Um, the, the idea, right, like at the closure of the mills and everything back in like the early 2000s was Lewis County will become a place for tourism. Like ideally that, that appears to be the most sustainable like industry with the resources that we have here. I mean, the idea is sound and it is like one that could potentially help County residents profit but it's also not something that you can just, you can't just like open a new mill. You know what I mean? Like it's not something that happens overnight. I'm not against. Uh, I thought this was America. I also we think We can like, open a new mill. Just get no, out no, there and I do just, it. I just mean there's a difference between I starting. Okay. I also think there's a difference in pay. I mean, those logging jobs and mill jobs pay pretty well. Yeah. And uh, tourism jobs, I mean, if you're working in a hotel or you're working at a campground or, you know. I mean, there's jobs that you can have that make good money, but I think the majority of them are not well-paying jobs. So is this about just analyzing the tourism industry or finding ways to bring more tourists in? What's Yeah, I think that's the overall goal of Discover Lewis County. Um, it was originally a Lewis County thing, like the actual county, and then they kind of passed it off to the Economic Alliance. That That's the goal, I guess. There's another yeah. meeting coming up, I think, on the 17th where they're going to talk like next steps and stuff this According to Mitchell Rowland, who wrote it, it was more of like a data dump just on the financial aspect of it as far as visitors here. I Speaking of Apple Harvest Festival, I'm pretty sure Harry Bagwandan helped like get Discover Lewis County off the ground with the same like idea in mind that if Lewis County wants to sustain agriculture, it could have like agro-tourism and all of those things kinds of things. Which is a big part of the Apple Harvest Festival this right. year. There's a farm tour that I don't know if you can still sign up for it, but you could try. Yeah. So um, what is the most underutilized tourism attraction in Lewis County? Rainbow in Falls. The yard Rainbow, Fall, Rainbow Falls. Underutilized. Eh. China Creek. It used to be a lot more heavily utilized the before the bridge there, yeah. blew out. Yeah. I, I understand, but it's still a really remarkable spot and very historic, and I think it's very underrated. It's also great camping. Like, all yeah. year round, it's great camping. We camped there when I was a kid. Most I mean, overrated. You got anything for that? The yard bird? I don't think that's overrated. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've seen people sleeping at the yard bird. Yeah, I've seen families stop there getting their pictures taken before. That's cute. Yeah. I've never seen that. Uh, most underrated, to- or most overrated tourism attraction. Mount Rainier. Think about it. Mount St. Helens. That's not, Can't neither of those are in Lake. Lewis County. Neither of those are in Lewis County. They count. They're, no, they don't. They're they finalists do. for Best of Lewis County. I think they count because you have to come through, or you, you can come through Lewis County to enter them. You know, Toledo is the gateway to Mount St. Helens. Just because it calls itself that. Like, is it really? I feel like it's a long <laughs> ways from like you go through Toledo and then you drive another like two hours and then you're in Mount St. Helens. It's a long driveway. It's a fair I think like Toodles more of a, oh, it's a gateway. Toodle you know, guy over here. I can't comfortably say that any spot in Lewis County is overrated. Everything's <clears throat> rated appropriately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or underrated. 
Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, if like, you want to like, can't think of one. Have they had a discussion on how to like, you know, make Lewis County just not not prop up our specific tourist attraction, but maybe just like a more welcoming place? Like, I don't know, <laughs> solve a murder. Oh, all roads lead to murder for you, don't they, Aaron? Well, eventually, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, it, no. It's on the list. I don't know if we'll get to it. This isn't about murder, but there is uh, something related to that. Centralia is pursuing a plan to build trails that connect all throughout the city. Love those. I saw advantage. the graphic of it. Love yeah, it. I figured you'd Love like it. that. Yeah. You won't, most of all, Reynolds. That, like, that would be fantastic because... Reynolds is god-awful as a dangerous. pedestrian. It's and then dangerous. they put up guardrails on the side of the road. Yeah. So if a car goes outside the white lines, which they often do, yeah. pedestrians have no place to go. You're just going to get squished. It's a good idea. Uh, Hub City Greenways is what it's called. Uh, I support it. It's great. I don't need to hear any more. Just make it happen. You're just going to poop all along those trails, aren't you? I <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, next news item. It was hard to find a believer, but Hayes Lake in Centralia has a beaver. Yeah. Isabel was hanging out at Hayes Lake Sunday, <laughs> as one does, and she saw a water rat of some kind swimming. She wasn't sure if it was a beaver or a nutria, so she embarked on an epic investigation to deliver answers to the people of Lewis County. To her chagrin, experts were initially unwilling to confirm the dog-sized rodent was in fact a beaver rather than nutria, which is an invasive species, which is fair because there did appear to be nutria living in the beaver's dam. Boy, this just it's, twists and turns. It's twists yeah. and turns. Yeah. I know. She went straight to beaver headquarters, the Beaver Institute. That it was that in Connecticut? Uh, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, and confirmed it was in fact a beaver. In Longview, they have had hunts over the years where folks can come out and just straight up murder the nutrients. Why don't we have that here? <laughs> that's, that's a legitimate question. Yeah, I sure. I haven't heard of it happening down there in a while, so maybe it doesn't anymore. And maybe I just made that up in my head, but I remember there being hunts for nutria down I, there. Lethal, Bring it back. Lethal removal is pretty much the, the go-to for nutria, so I'm pretty sure getting approval for that sort of thing, if you called your local WDFW biologist, they would be like, go for it. Like, I mean, I'm sure there's a process that's a little bit more complicated could, than that, but it's not. Could you lot. imagine the scene? If, and I'm sure it's a little more ordered, but if the, you know, the city was just like seven o'clock Tuesday, bring a club <laughs> and come on down and see how many of them you the can whack. Purge. Uh, they are classified as a prohibited aquatic animal yes. species. No special trapping permit is necessary for the use of live traps. Yeah, there you go. And I did find the 2012 story. Longview ahead of the pack in controlling the non-native nutria. Um, yeah, so there's that. Like temporarily um, every like you know third month <laughs> we're gonna lift the no shooting your gun in city limits thing, but only for nutria. I don't know. Maybe they were just catching these. Oh, somebody's gonna go murder a friend and then toss a nutria on him and be like, "Well, <sighs> oh my gosh, a friend." <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not a friend. What's going on with this person? That's a lot. Uh, That's a lot. In Louisiana, they pay you six dollars a nutria tail. Tonders and Traversers registered in the CNCP. I don't know what like CNCP that. means. Well, Louisiana is like built on marshland just like here. They also and, don't have real laws. And what? <laughs> and the um, Nutria have like been raging there for a very long time. And the problem with Nutria is they burrow. They'll dig a lot of holes. And so they can be a significant harm to infrastructure in almost any like wetland, but especially for a place that like the whole state is wetland, <laughs> that's a big issue. Okay. They should do it. The tail thing. I had a friend who killed rats and he got paid by uh, the tail and he would hang them from, <laughs> he would hang them from the fence in the field so you could drive by in forks and be like, oh man, you made $10 today. You guys wow. have heard me say this sort of thing a million times, but honestly, the state could make so much money if they just capitalized on people's already distaste for invasive species. And sea lions, come on. You want to get rid of sea lions? Easy. Sell a tag. People will pay to do it. It's true. Yeah. People like to murder animals. They yeah, they sure do. do. They do. Just use that to your advantage. Make money and save these already very threatened aquatic ecosystems. They do it with the pike minnow. 
The pike minnow, you yeah, get paid. Exactly. There's people whose whole job is to go out and fish the pike minnow. Right, Which exactly. I still don't understand is an invasive species that they introduce <laughs> like, and then pay people to remove. <laughs> Jordan was never able to get the answer to that, our former outdoors man. Uh, next item, state auditor gives Lewis County a clean audit. Nothing was found to be out of line. Next and line. Let's say, what say What's... you, Aaron Van Tyle, staunch critic to all things county and the sworn enemy of the Lewis County commissioners? I say, <laughs> the county commissioners aren't <laughs> checking the books over there. I know. I, 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 I may be critical of the commissioners, but in general, I think the staff at Lewis County, the people hired for their positions with training in their positions, are largely very good at their jobs. They know what they're doing. That's yeah. how the county can continue to operate despite... The Despite three elected the people in charge. I agree. I agree. County folk are always pretty easy to work with. I, accessible. I yeah. think that's one thing that the Chronicle like has going for them too when it comes to county reporting and stuff that isn't as like controversial. Like here's a public works project or whatever. I can like call public works or I can call uh, solid waste utility or whatever, and people will talk to me. Almost any other place, like if I were to call Solid Waste Utility in King County, they would route me through a spokesperson and it would take me a long time and I would not get probably all of the information and not be able to quote the person who actually knows what's going on. It is really wild to me, like how many steps other like bureaucracies will go through to buffer the media. But in Lewis County, they can like have better and more accurate and consistent coverage on whatever is going on because they answer the phone. I appreciate that so much. So I agree. The staff there, I have almost only good things to say. Yeah. Um, another good county department, the uh, transfer station. Been taking a lot of stuff to the dump lately. Yeah. 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 You know what? Great over there. They're it's always happy. Great operation. Mm-hmm. It is. Uh, next item, a ghost walk and dark market coming to downtown Centralia. Ooh. Wait, do we have a spooky... Nope. No. <laughs> it's not spooky. Do you know uh, who's going to be there? Uh, Mr. No. LeFron boys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Old man Transalta. <laughs> uh, the Centralia Downtown Festival. Is this different than the Centralia Downtown Association? Oh, yes. Yeah, so these are two different <laughs> associations. Are they rivals? Do they I work don't know together? that. No. I don't think so. They they've, just do different things. They've both been around a long time, I believe. Do we have a Centralia Uptown Association? I don't think so. I was thinking about that recently. Is anyone going to like organize something around like you know the Harrison Avenue exit? Yeah, Centralia Outlet Mall Area yeah. District Organization Association. Um, uh, put your bowler hat. Put on your bowler hat and step back into Centralia's golden days. The association stated, "Local what? tour guides <laughs> will thrill you with ghost stories, folklore, and historical morsels as you explore downtown Centralia." That's exactly how I read it in my really? head. Stepping yeah. on Boo Coda's shoes, there, aren't they? Okay, but what Centralia's golden days? Yeah, yeah, back when there was a prostitute on every do corner mean, and a speakeasy in every Do they mean house. like before 1910? Is that what they're talking about? Like I what? Didn't, <laughs> no, I didn't think too much into it. I yeah. thought they're just trying to announce their event. I just feel back like when, that's now. Well, it was pre cars, like in the in the train days. Okay. okay. You think you think these are Centralia's golden days? In whoa, comparison whoa. to like the last century, there's a lot less strife. Yes. Well, there's a lot less El Rancho too. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the real tragedy. Uh, the ghost walk is scheduled for <laughs> 4 to 8 p.m. Friday, October 20th, and 3 to 8 p.m. Saturday, October 21st. Tours will commence every hour, starting at the Lewis Clark Hotel. The cost to take part in a ghost walk is $20, but really, like, you just follow along. And the, yeah, it's, I thought about that, too. You could just be across the street. <laughs> I like, can get the whole the thing. Uh, don't do that, though, because I think that the association yeah. deserves that money. The dark market goes on for longer hours, but on the same days. So it's, like, all day Saturday, and then I think maybe the same hours on Where's the, Where's the dark market at? It's at the Lewis and Clark Hotel as okay. well, just right across the street. Uh, what great Centralians would you like to see in ghost form? Ooh. I didn't have any good answers to this. I immediately thought George Washington. And then after that, I immediately thought David Kyle Lindsay refuting the uh, <laughs> <laughs> existence of George Washington. <laughs> my, a late friend of mine had a conspiracy theory that George Washington takes. never existed. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, so those were my two. Yeah, uh, Mr. LaFromboise, obviously. I would have so much to ask him about. 
That's just a, a name we've made up for <laughs> ghostly things that have happened around this building. Yeah. Which things have happened. This is I'm definitely sure a haunted building. Not in like a malicious way, but there's a ghost here for sure. No, oh, it's just the rats, for God's sake. The rat did not slam the microwave door when I was in here That's alone during the heard. pandemic. Mm-hmm. I didn't come back for two days, Aaron. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Um, I was going to say something about this. What was that? I don't know. Never mind. Sorry. You sure? About ghosts? Yeah. No, right before. Oh, oh, voice? oh. I was going to say the Festivals Association. Um, the Downtown Festivals Association has um, Holly from uh, The Shady Lady and um, the, I can't remember her first name, but Mrs. Seleski and a couple other like downtown business owners. And so, and I'm pretty sure it's been going on, it's possible they've been doing it longer than the downtown association on its own. I'm not sure. But mm-hmm. anyways, I just, I thought that I would give them a shout out. It's a very local organization. Okay. Uh, next item, Glusa Camp Perez votes with party in historic ousting of House Speaker. Our local congresswoman helped take out Kevin McCarthy as the Speaker of the House. She said, quote, he's taken our country to the brink of a default and the brink of a shutdown because of his refusal to operate in a bipartisan manner. He's shown he'd rather be held hostage by a bunch of weirdos than admit he cannot lead the people's house. I appreciate her use of weirdos. People don't say weirdos enough outside of this podcast. Yeah, I was intrigued, like many people, by that whole thing. I thought the Dems might step in and bail him out, but they were like, nah. (laughs) Just absolutely not. It's been a real crazy week in... House history. Yeah, that's the first time that's ever happened, and the only the second time it's ever been attempted, with the last being in 1910. Yeah, uh, I think there was one like motion filed in right 2015 well. or something. But yeah, I mean the whole thing is very, very wild. Especially just the, I mean that it seems like this entire Congress has been filled with this sort of like how to like battle off and then pander to like extremist ideologies or like just politically extreme people. And then like, it's just not benefiting anybody. And yeah, I don't know. It's a weird, it's a very weird time. It kind of sucks that like, we can't just like have a working government because of people fighting over politics that aren't actually like important. It was like Denny Heck comparing the state legislature and the Capitol here um, after his time as a congressman, and he seemed to just have deep hatred and disdain for Congress. Yeah. Like, that's how I would have described how he described it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you get punished for reaching across the aisle. Like, uh, yeah, he'd rather be lieutenant governor. Well, while the house may be in disarray, your house can be completely covered. <laughs> nice. You call our friends at the Roof Doctor. They will provide you with a free estimate on any kind of roof. I don't know. Maybe it's a roof on your house, your garage, your shop, whatever. Just give them a call, 360-736-0246. They're a family-owned company serving the greater Lewis County area and and beyond, up into Olympia, and I think they probably go down south, even to Longview, um, since 1959. And if you need help paying for that house, Summit Funding. Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> we will get to Summit funding <laughs> shortly. Uh, next news item, the Grove of the Matriarchs, ancient stand in the Gifford Pinchot inspires centurial forestry planning. Centurial, is that how you pronounce that? Centurial. Centurial. Sure. Uh, the Grove, just a short walk off a forest road south of Randall, has a 47-foot circumference western red cedar that John Squires, 64, of Packwood, believes to be between 700 and 1,000 years old, Surrounding that, there's more than a dozen other cedars and monstrous Douglas fir trees. Its name is a play off the Grove of the Patriarchs in Mount Rainier National Park. These trees are as glorious, yet less beloved, and much more wild. Just typical little sister stuff there. Uh, Squires said he heard the name first from some Enviro friends, also known as environmentalists. I just, like, that word now isn't used all that often. In Lewis County, it still is, but, like, everywhere else in the world, people say, like, conservationists or conservation advocates or whatever. Like, environmentalist is, like, not a commonly used word. So I'm just trying to think a little bit beyond Lewis County with that explanation, basically. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, its location is being kept a secret to prevent the pores of Lewis County from enjoying the trees. <laughs> where are they? <laughs> Tell us where the trees are. You Drop wrote a pin, that? you coward. <laughs> I told you, it's just a short walk off of Forest Road South Which of Forest Randall. Road? <laughs> I can tell you that you take 23 for a while. That really gets us there. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you it should really be able to find them. There. There. It's no. a paved road all the way there. They should be able to fly over top, right? They're really tall trees. You should just be able to see them like, the thing is, from like, the highway. I also have a weird feeling about not saying exactly where it is in the story. Mm-hmm. But I understand that this place, like, it, it's not like you could just have a lot of people there. Like, there's... N- it's just literally right off of Forest Road, right? So it's like there's no parking. There's no trail. It's just like here's a grove of trees. It's back there in the woods. Go get it. How'd you and find so them? If you he he took us there. Okay. Blindfolded. And and I'm no, I'm sure that he would take anybody there who asked. But it's like at this point, if you were to just say, Hey everybody, go there, like there they it literally would not be able to like support that. So I understand the hesitancy, although I also was like kind of I don't know. I, I tried arguing with him about it, but I figured if he was taking us all the way out there, I should respect his wishes. Kinda sounds gatekeepy. No, I get that. Like I but in the best version of like a well kempt forest or best version of Mount Rainier, it's both accessible and cared for. And like, did you guys see what happened at sunrise in the last year when there was that like meteor shower and people were literally pitching tents on the wildflowers? Like it was just they were all over the place in this already like threatened spot and nobody had like done the education or read enough to know that they shouldn't be doing that and like the the park does not have the staff to go out there and like move 300 people who decided to pitch their tents to watch a meteor shower like and you can go like that is sort of a systemic issue but in order to tackle it you would have to have like somebody at all of these sites in the forest and at the park and everything who is like an interpretive person and when like forest service stuff stopped happening because logging stopped happening the first programs that got cut were interpretive programs like immediately like there's nobody teaching people how to interact with their environment around them well and so you can do the work to learn how to do that and then experience it or like you risk just ruining it. And I, I completely understand the gatekeeping argument. Like I get that. And I don't like want it to be that. And I like would, I, like I said, I think that John Squires would take anybody out there, but it's just like, somebody's <laughs> also just going to find it and it'll be online at some point. It'll be on Instagram. It'll be somewhere. Spoken like a Lorax over there, Isabel. I uh, speak for the trees. Hashtag Enviros. Um, all right. no, I understand, though. Yeah, so do I. Uh, next item, rape allegation against Morton police officer is under investigation. Prosecutor awaits additional information. Uh, the possible rape charges against the Morton cop are being considered by the county prosecutor's office, but a charging decision hasn't been made. He is accused of meeting with a woman he met on Tinder a couple months prior for consensual sex on March 30th and ignoring the woman's repeated commands for him to stop. We only heard about this because the victim called the Chronicle. It allegedly happened last spring. Uh, The department was unaware the investigation was ongoing until being contacted by the Chronicle. I believe the story said that the officer had told him it was all cleared up. Yeah, that's the case. Yeah, reporter Emily Fitzgerald. Just a hell of a detective work out there. It kind of might make a little more sense once you add the fact that the police chief at the time has since resigned in what many would say is disgrace. Yeah. Um, So it might have been information that he had. And to be fair, it wasn't that it's still under investigation because the sheriff's office has pushed it along um, to the prosecutor's office. It's the prosecutor is waiting on some sort of information. We don't really know what it is. Um, But yeah, to have a it, it seems off to me to have a, a cop out there on duty every day in the same community where he's facing that allegation. I assume the victim lives in or near there. Uh, that's a big assumption, but 
um, seems a bit bungled. I would be surprised, though, if you're going... Well, no, okay, never mind. Uh, I got... Or Emily said that she got a call from the new chief at Morton, who I don't know his name, but... Um, and he was really, like, upset to hear this and was really, like, glad that That's she... That's why I mentioned the turnover. Something. Yeah, like, and, like, so I don't... Th- yeah, I also don't think it's because, like, the entire staff was just looking the other way. I think that that is one of so many consequences of having leadership that is not trustworthy or even morally good. Well said. Yeah, yeah. Sounds... uh bad I don't know it's disturbing that at some point you could have uh, been apprehended by the Morton police and tossed in a holding cell with one other person and odds were the like there was more sexual predators outside the cell than inside it with you it's a way of looking at it I, there's just a lot of interesting like math there like how big of a two people out of the Morton police department like how what, like what percentage is that yeah, it's kind of like the the like priest stuff, right? Like, how mm-hmm. how did we get this percentage in the Catholic Church and whatever? Like, yeah, no, I I mean, you could argue about that stuff all day long, and people will pull numbers from either side, and I don't know what what is there to say about it. It's obviously an issue when you have leadership who doesn't set a good example, and obviously that kind of leadership attracts the wrong people. Like, yeah, full stop. yeah. Uh, next item, we've got the Hub City Greenways. Yeah, I just figured we could roll through these real quick. Yeah, I've got the map of it up. Uh, yeah, this looks awesome. Uh, who would be in charge of funding this? I think it's the city, um, and it's a 20-year plan. I think they're probably pursuing grants, as always, things we'll like that. will be dead by then. I know. I know. Me too. No, you won't. Uh, what? You're not going to be dead by then. No, we'll see. Isabel hasn't um, heard about climate change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Mayor Kelly Smith Johnson, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Cameron McGee, Councilor Mark Wesley, and city staff have been meeting with partner agencies, including the Office of the Shayless Basin, Twin Transit, and the Centralia School District, um, uh, to work on developing this plan. And I reiterate that it looks cool as hell. Do it. Do it now. Just do it tomorrow. Get out there. The numbers in the story, um, but oh man, I wish I could find it in here. The mayor stopped by to tell me about this before the story came out and they were t- talking about the n- amount of shoreline that's in Centralia. 1,905 acres. 1,905 <gasps> acres. So that's the amount of shoreline in tra- Centralia and she was just... Like within the city limits? I think that's what she meant. Wow. That, uh, utilizing that. We're not utilizing that. If we were... She specifically... That's acres, not miles. Yeah, no, yeah. That, that's still, still really that's significant. Her example of an area that like could be utilized like and actually bring people in or at least be something locals could have fun with was like the area behind the goodwill in Centralia, that yeah. little forested area back there between mm-hmm. like the Skookum Hayes Truck and Lake. Hayes Lake. Yes, yes. It's I our own little Venice. To to me, Hayes Lake is already prime tourism area. To other people, they might not feel that way. Yeah, you got some good photos there. Um, I haven't even the used them yet. I think so. The, uh, yeah, I was going to say, um, Bob Russell, who is on the board of the Coastal Salmon Foundation and Partnership, I think I'm saying that right, Coast Salmon Foundation Partnership. Um, it talked about doing that sort of thing, like with a walkway and whatnot behind, um, or like r- in front of where Yardbirds is. So like across, is that national? Yeah, yeah. Across mm-hmm. national, like where there's those wetlands and stuff. If you had like a boardwalk through there. And I was like, that's such a good idea because then you could like save that, la- like reserve that land for some kind of species preservation, but it could also be, used at all which like for walking stuff like i i think thinking outside the box on that sort of thing is is going to be what gets us to a point where we can have like recreation and conservation in unison i think the coolest part of this just looking at it zoomed in for the first time is you could they would make a trail from the discovery trail which is down off of harrison um all along by the poop factory so this trail would run all along the Chehalis River all the way to Fort Borst Park where you could uh, that would be pretty neat I think as long yeah. as as long as the tree issue we were discussing didn't happen and it didn't get ruined or anything like that but you could walk all the way to Borst and then from Borst you could you could make your way all the way to Seminary Hill if you wanted to yeah but how does this fit in with the Skookumchuck levees that's a it's a good question. Mm. And the walls around China Creek. <laughs> uh, gondolas on China Creek in my lifetime. That's the dream. Yeah. That's the <laughs> yeah. 
I just want to walk through China Creek once. Oh, Chad's going to hear that, and you're going to hear from Chad. Oh, I, I've already talked to Kim Ashmore about this. The problem is you have to wear, like, an oxygen monitor to go under the buildings. It's not... It's well, you like, don't have to. <laughs> it would be, like, a serious liability issue for the city, so... There's a cat living back behind the Chronicle that's been killing rats for us, and I watched him, like, he's just jumping into the creek, running under there Ugh, and coming out with rats. King. <laughs> I know. Leaves him in the same spot, too. Uh, other roundup items, Marie Glusacomp Perez pens letter opposing senior center prayer policy. That pretty sure. much is what it is. And this is a little late. Yeah. This was a, a summer did, controversy. Did we talk I would about say. this? I don't think so. Maybe but we maybe we can. Bike. Anyways, that's probably enough for it. And then the trains are back. Right? All right. Cool. Shahail Central Railroad has made a deal with a Oregon Railway that's going to come in and run trains starting with the, oh, what's the... The first Polar one. Polar Express. The Polar Express, right. You can go get tickets to that now, which I think is cool. I'm glad they're doing something like this. They talked about doing it with uh, Mount Rainier Railroad, and then that didn't work out. Um, so this is uh, Goose Lake. That's who they're partnering with. Goose yeah. Lake Railway. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Hi, this is Jeff and Julie from Fairway Lanes. Jeff and I met Jasic of Summit Funding at our bowling center, so when we fell in love with this community and it was time to relocate, we knew we would be calling Summit Funding. They understand that everyone has a unique situation when buying a home. He had already helped two of our employees get into their own homes. The Summit Funding team exceeded our expectations. It was a seamless experience with great communication from his whole team. Thank you to Summit Funding for making our buying experience special and memorable. All right, we're back. Time for segments. First up, Tales from the Takes page. And we got a call in from Julia McDonald that says, is artifil- <laughs> artificial intelligence would have not bungled that headline. Is artificial intelligence taking over the writing world? She asked whether writing is being taken over. Um, Schwartz, you went straight to the source. I did. And you asked ChatGPT if it thinks it's better than us. Mm-hmm. That was my exact words. And the response was... Do you want to read it? I don't possess personal capabilities or opinions, so I don't make subjective judgments about my own abilities. But then outlined like a bunch of reasons why it's really good at writing. So, hmm. you guys I, ever mess around with Chat GPT? Yeah, I don't. I don't like it. it Weirds me out. I have done a little bit with like we're going to New York for our honeymoon, and so I've said like here's our budget, here's places that we're already going, build us a trip itinerary, and that sort of thing. And it's it's kind of cool for that. It's not always like accurate. Like it's like get up in the morning, go have lunch, and then go get on your morning flight. Like right. you know, like it doesn't actually like do it perfectly, but it's some good ideas. I still think it's. Uh, I think it's not there, but I think it very well could get to a point where if you knew exactly how to program it and say the right stuff to it, it could write better than you could. I keep a tab open with it, just like for the last six months or so. I don't use it for writing, obviously. Um, Mm -hmm. We don't do that. The only thing I have found so far to use it for, and I know there's probably many other ways, is when we get letters submitted on the website, they're always broken text. Like It's like three words, new line, three words, new line, and it goes all the way down, and that can take me like 15 to 20 minutes to fix. I just throw that in there and say, fix all the sentence breaks, and it does it in like two seconds. Oh, that's cool. That's smart. It saves time. But that's really the only thing I've seen with it. Um, I was going to say, though, it's definitely showing up in our letters to the editor. I've seen so. so many that I'm just certain are chat GBT things just by the way. I, that, even, I hadn't thought of that for any of them. Oh, I've thought that for several. There's like a it has a very specific like opinion structure. So if you were to say like write an opinion piece about this thing in under 500 words or something like it's it's really like blocked out the same way. It always has like an in closing in the last paragraph. It's just like, uh, it, yeah, it kind of drives me nuts. It's very robotic. I had a reporter application that was 100% written with it. Yeah. Um, and I know what you're talking about. You can tell yeah. right now. And was it, it Dylan? Wait, no, we did not hire this person. This person also uh, <laughs> didn't take the time. They, the chat GBT letter is obvious and then sent it and then, just entered like 45 newspaper editors into the scent box. <laughs> Mesh send. So oh, no. it was doomed from the start. Didn't know um, how to BCC, huh? Next column headline, the freedom to read the first amendment and libraries as a cornerstone of democracy. A Timberland regional library staffer wrote about the freedom to read statement. 
Uh, from the column, quote, the opening line of the statement sets a clear point. The freedom to read is essential to our democracy. The next line underscores that achieving democracy is not easy. It is continuously under attack. When a government allows freedom of expression, people may determine their own interests and form their own understanding without government control. Uh, the library addressed a recent request by Lewis County commissioners for a rating system on books without naming them directly. Um, quoting here, recently the Timberland Regional Library received a request to adopt a policy for labeling all books in the collection. This request calls for someone to rate books using the same rating system as films. Libraries already place materials in age-appropriate categories inside the library and in online catalogs. Under the guise of protecting children, book rating systems are a tool for censorship. This suggests that broad access to a variety of viewpoints and topics should be restricted based on the subjective opinions of appropriateness. Uh, continues, what we know about the coordinated groups proposing labeling systems or outright bans is they are purposefully stigmatizing works that address the lives and experiences of people outside of areas considered appropriate. And reading how well-written, well-researched, and how well-presented this column is makes me question anybody who would write a column attacking the library. Um, there, the... Um point about the rating system on books without naming them directly, there was one book at least that the Lewis County Commissioners talked about that was like about um, kids who are like, I can't remember exactly what it was. It was something to do with LGBTQ, like identity, feelings, whatever. And I can't, yeah, I wish I remember the name of it, but they like specifically talked about one. And then like during a meeting, Commissioner Pollock pulled it up and was like, I don't understand what's wrong with this one, but okay, we'll still sign the letter. I don't know. It's, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's just like, leave the library alone. You're not going to, you're, you're never going to look good trying to ban anything from the library. It just never works. Um, and I don't know, maybe there will be, I, you know, whatever. It made for a great scene in Field of Dreams. You remember that? School board meeting. Oh, to ban yeah. Books. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was a, that was a good one. Mm -hmm. Kevin Costner, not a book banner. <laughs> <laughs> James Earl Jones, also not a book banner. <laughs> uh, it is worth pointing out that this is Banned Books Week. Mm. So if you're into banned books, you know, go read one. They're good. What, what Some of the best. What makes a book banned? I think it's different. I, I thought the it's, library explained it pretty well. Like, you can you ban them by jurisdiction. I mean, there was an effort to un defund a library on the east side of Washington just, what, last week that failed? Dayton, um, wasn't it? So, I mean, there's not, like, a way to just say this book is banned from everyone. Right. We live in a free country. Um, but I think it's more like the you know, pockets here and there. Like this, we would be in a pocket, I think. They're not trying to ban them, but the rating system they obviously took as being in the same vein mm -hmm. in this I, commentary. I think if you try to impose a rating system or ban a specific book, if you even suggest it or you file a complaint with the library or whatever, mm -hmm. you should have to attach a photo of yourself and they hang it up behind the desk with the name of the book you wanted banned and why. It's oddly specific, but sure. I, look, I, it's just like getting kicked out of a bar or something. They put, they, if you get 86, they like hang your picture up like no business for this guy. I am one. They can still come back to the library. Banning books, but I do think, I was sharing this with Isabel earlier. I think like there is something to be said for placement um, sure. and availability and things like that. So I don't know. It might not be the last we've heard of it since this is banned book week. So... I like Aaron's yeah. idea. Maybe they should just make like a bookmark to stick in all the books. It says like this person doesn't like this. This book. person tried to ban this book. And be like, oh, look at this nerd. Uh, anyway, or then you could like you have the the book banner's address and you can check the book out and go over to their house and like read it right in front of it and be like, look at it. I'm just <laughs> dunking on you. I'm reading this book. You don't think it's appropriate? I'm reading it. Oh my god, one of them said wiener. Um, Sirens banger of the week. On September 29th, two male subjects in a in separate pickup trucks pulled up in front of the college residence on Folsom Street and exchanged bags of golf clubs before one of the subjects urinated out of the vehicle door. They reportedly left, quote, a plastic tub with what looks like a dead animal behind before driving off. I just had off. so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, it, it tells you a lot without telling you anything. Well, these guys sound pretty cool, really. <laughs> <laughs> I just... I don't know what was happening there. Could have been a nutria in there. 
Uh, just clubbed yeah. him to death <laughs> with a golf with a five iron. Mm-hmm. Legal. Uh, an employee at a coffee shop on Northwest Pacific Avenue reported a male customer, quote, told baristas to put money into a bag and then bought a coffee instead. The subject reported told the employee it was a bad joke. Sounds like it. <laughs> that was, yeah, that's just kind of a dumb thing to do. Uh, I like the first one better. That sounds funny. Yeah, the first one, yeah, there's just, there's so many different options there. I mean, it sounds like they just like left the golf course and realized they'd grabbed each other's golf clubs. I've and read they'd, this. It's been a long day. I've read this like three nutria. or four times since the first time you read it out loud. Like I'm, I've just gone back through it. It seems as though they're saying, well, okay. It says the subjects reportedly left. They came in two pickups. Did they leave with the one plastic tub with what looks like a dead animal, or did they both take a plastic tub? That, with what looks like a dead animal. This is a left a plastic tub. Like, yeah, like, one of them left oh, it behind, like on the sidewalk. Oh, I get it. Okay, I get it. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I can't read today. I Sorry. also felt like you should be able to tell if it's a dead animal or not by looking at it. It yeah. looks like a dead animal. Clearly, the caller didn't really investigate. They're looking <laughs> out their own window, right? Yeah, maybe it was just like a like a head cover for a golf club, shaped like a cat or something. Could be. <laughs> Uh, People's Champion of the Week, Entrepreneurship Key for Recent WF West High School Grad. This is about Sage Brindle, who earned her associate's degree with an emphasis on business at CC and graduated from WF West. She opened Lone Tree Coffee Company last May while finishing high school. She said it was a lot to handle, but it was worth, worth it to do something she's passionate about. As soon as I could drive, I started working, she said. Uh, her cousin, Gracie West, operates West on Wheels, a burger trailer based out of Mossy Rock. Her parents owned and operated a logging business for years before its sale, and her brother and dad recently started a helicopter business that offers tours, surveys, and game recovery. Pretty cool. Oh. Uh, we've got Chehalis United Methodist Church Pastor Zachary Taylor and Pa Chella. The first one of these was a much smaller event held last year at the church in Chehalis. While Pa Chella moved this year, the church still sponsored the event and had a booth where people could have their pets blessed by Pastor Zachary Taylor. Free of charge. I just think the blessings of the pets is one of the coolest things. Yeah, right you know, that's a cool deal. Uh, the event was held just prior to St. Francis Day, a religious holiday commemorating St. Francis of Assisi, the patron saint of animals in the environment. You know what? Sometimes churches are okay. It sounded sometimes like a really good. cool event. Yeah, like this is fun. What sometimes. a hot take from Aaron. Churches are good sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes faith-based organizations help the community. Not like... Most of the time or anything. Yeah, sometimes they, when they do, that's fine. <laughs> when they're doing other things, you know, not cool. I was being sarcastic, by the way. I'm aware. <laughs> I could tell by the tone of your voice. It's a sarcastic tone. Uh, next item, <laughs> Shales teacher and DNR firefighter Jordan Duncan, who is recognized as STEM Teacher of the Year. He's a third grade teacher at Orrin Smith Elementary, and he will receive the Field STEM Teacher of the Year Award from the Pacific Education Institute the organization provides resources to educators to engage in outdoor-based learning in a learning framework called Field STEM. Uh, he's an educator, firefighter, and avid outdoorsman, and he constantly looks for ways to connect his different worlds. I like to give my administrators headaches, he said. Uh, I keep them up at night like, oh, what's he going to think of next? I like that cool. story a lot. Mitchell went and covered that for Emily at the last minute and then came back and was like excited about it. And I, so I might write a little long on this. And if you know Mitchell, he does not write long on just about anything. He's straight to the point. Um, I really like that story. That would probably be my pick. I, it's a yeah, pretty prestigious yeah, I award. Think so too. I mean, I like the dog blessings, though. Uh-huh. Um, I think it should go to St. Francis of Assisi. <laughs> the canonization wasn't enough. He needs people's champion. I want to ask, uh, like, Zach- Zachary Taylor, the pastor, if they could do, like, once a year exorcisms for animals. Like, oh I, got a bad dog. I got a corgi that's just got something in him, I tell you. You want him to go hang around with the uh, the guilty dogs from dad court? Dad exactly. Board? That's yeah. an even better idea. Instead of, like, them, euthanizing. Like straight. <laughs> Instead of euthanizing the dogs, we'll bring them to an exorcism. It'll be great. Or you have the priest or pastor in there during the hearings, and once, the, you know, this dog's going to die, father, deliver the last rites. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it'd be great. Do you have any last words? <laughs> you can visit, like, the animal shelter, like, you know, pastors visit jails. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, it's and last minister rites. Minister to the animals. Yeah, I like that. Uh, Facebook comments of the week. Ugh, I did not do these. No. Uh, Isabel, you put these together, right? These are just, like, going to be funny or nice. Like, they're not going to okay. be 
ridiculous. Okay. Um, I do want me to do them, or do you want to do them? Uh, I'll do them. I'll do them. Before we did the beaver was a beaver, we posted its photo and asked commenters what they thought. Here are a few of their replies. Uh, it's just something new from down by the ponds over yonder at Transalta that's made its way down to Hayes Lake. LOL, those ponds can be a bit spicy from what I hear. And you never know what kind of wildlife might come out of that area. And then the eyeball emoji, pretty good. <laughs> Uh, what's so hard to believe about a beaver in a lake? Good point. Mmm, vanilla. I, I don't... I don't get it. I think I, you're like vanilla, <laughs> like basic. And like this new, this isn't news, maybe? Uh, I don't, I don't know. know. That's, I just, that's what I thought. I just like it anyways. Know. And then somebody says, if they are nutria, period, shoot them, period. Which we've been over. Yeah. Um, on a photo of a great egret, somebody says, evasive species. <laughs> <laughs> right, what is an egret? Uh, it's Big like a white heron. bird. Oh. It's like a crane. Do they are they all white? Mm-hmm. They're always white. Yeah. Um, Wait, I want to see an egret. Uh, I'm not sure that they're always white, You're but I think most like... of them, like cattle egret, are like those white birds that stand on top of cows. You know. We have great egrets. Yeah, that's what this one was. You got three of them flying together. Is that right, or is that a weird yeah. reflection shot? Okay. No, that was three I of them was flying cool. together. It kind of looks like a. We always called them shit accords when I was a kid. I don't know. I don't that think means. that's accurate. But I think that maybe that's a heron. I'm not sure. Um, I just thought, like, maybe they meant it. I mean, probably they meant to say invasive, but also, like, you know, you get close to them, they start to fly away. It's like, maybe they did mean invasive species. Well, I mean, species. pretty much every animal is an invasive species <laughs> out in the wild under those. Most birds, yes. That's definitely true. Uh, on the story about Cal Raleigh apologizing for his remarks about the M's front office after their game 161 elimination, uh, just because some of these comments genuinely made Isabel feel better about the end of the season. We all wanted to go to the World Series, but it didn't happen. Oh, no, I, for one, and a million other fans still love the Mariners, and I'm not alone in saying that Cal Rowley is the best catcher in the league. I don't know about that. He's good. I just thought that was really sweet. I think behind the plate, he is one of the best. Yeah, he's okay. They were like... Didn't he have the most putouts this year? I think he did. I saw that somewhere. Fact. It's not because like he's good. That's I, just situation. Because they've had a lot of base runners again. Yeah. A million <laughs> other fans still love the Mariners. That's how I read it. Uh, thank you so much, Mariners. You're so much fun to watch. Keep working, Dumper. Follow your dreams. Great job this year with the stick and behind the plate. That's what people say to us too. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had a great year, and you have been constantly improving throughout your career. Because we're the Dumpers, you know. I got so, it. See what I, I did we there? got it. <laughs> Uh, keep up your hard work and the championship will come. It won't. I believe that. I don't. Hey. We are not going anywhere. We love our team. I mean, that's kind of, you can't say we're not going anywhere when you, you just got gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, keep, you left. <laughs> it's, you're already gone. I um, just feel like the idea that this many people, and this is just like a very small taste of there were, you know, more than 50 comments on that post. I love that people like who were scrolling through the, the Chronicle Facebook page or like this showed up because they follow the Chronicle or whatever, were like taking the time to tell Cal Rowley like how much they think he's Fuck great. Fuck up, kid. No, they no, they think he's they think he's great. Like they're just like being nice and they're like, hey, we love the Mariners. And hey, this keep is, your chin up, champ. Yeah, it's like, you know how we always do that thing where it's like, ah, oh, so how about there's Mariners? Like whenever we're trying to change the subject, it is because everyone genuinely like has warm feelings about them and i think it's just a nice thing to remember cal raleigh hit a career best 232 i didn't say anything year. about his at the plate work i <laughs> specifically said behind the plate he had twice as many strikeouts as he had rbis yeah um, he I, might I, be a big dumper in other ways this year but that's okay we still love cal yeah he's fine um and then on a story about grizzly bears charging hunters somebody wrote i support the right to arm bears dun, dun. so do i uh, what's in the next edition? Oh, man. Uh, you sprung that on me. I don't know. Mitchell's hanging out at the Office of the Shales Basin meeting today. Mm -hmm. Ooh. All day out in Satsop. Mm -hmm. So it's a great day for a, a drive to Satsop, too, yeah, I would say. Seriously. See those cooling towers? Um, it looks like we got some Rainbow Falls fun facts in here. We talked about Rainbow Falls earlier. We'll go with some Isabel photos from the falls. Um, and I don't know, Isabel, you held the meeting yesterday. What else do we have coming? Um, I, we're all kind of batting down trying to get some of the election coverage, uh, finished up. I know that there's like two other things that I was working on, but now that I'm like supposed to say them, I can't. 
because I can't remember. It's fine. We'll have plenty of stuff in the paper. Emily's working on the student achievement oh, yeah, initiative. Yeah. yeah. Presentation like down at WF West. They had a bunch of students and all their different skills and uh, education groups that they're a part of, like multi gen, yeah. and they had graphic design and choir and band and all sorts of really cool stuff. That's cool. And um, uh, Mitchell is going to go to Toledo's birthday party this Saturday, which will be really fun. I told him to, like, yeah, anyways. Uh, and then also there was the RV thing. We're hoping Owen calls mm-hmm. Stacy Denham on that and like an update on the RV um, hauling rules that Centralia put in. So Yeah, are they ever going to start hauling those away? That's Let's, what that's we wanted. That's why know. we're calling. So There's a big one on the corner of we Reynolds and got Pearl. Got a picture of that one. Hey, Jared, get turned in a picture of that yesterday. Yeah, it's been there for weeks. Yeah, that's kind of what we want to know. And I'm sure Stacy, our chief denim, will be willing to talk about it. He's usually pretty open with us. And we just have people asking, you know, if there is this ban, why aren't we hauling them away? And I have a feeling it'll have to do with cost, but we'll find out. I don't know. It is like right there on the corner of a major intersection. Somebody wrote toe on it in All bright green it. letters. So I mean, it's on it several times. It's like on the front, back, and side. Yeah. And like several cops have to drive past it to get to work. Yeah. Uh, there's another one on the road between, on 4th Avenue between Tower and Pearl mm-hmm. that is stuffed full of trash. Yeah. Go get them, boys. Yeah. You just pick them all up. Get them out of there. It's tough to turn down that road. Anyway. <laughs> How did any I do? Any the other notes are pretty good, right? To, yeah, pretty I never good. want to do the notes again, though. It's All right. very time-consuming. Yeah, it, is, it kind actually. of is, isn't it? <laughs> um, we should just freestyle sometime. I'll we'll just have Cronline open, just bounce around. We'll just have Chad GBT. I feel like it, it would go for like 20 minutes. Yeah, oh, no, we, we'd go a lot longer than that. <laughs> 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 we would have thoughts. It would just devolve into an argument or Schwartz and I discussing uh, our favorite topics, like 1990s rap mm-hmm. and yeah. more early 2000s, but yeah. Yeah. And that's about it. Speaking of early 2000s, tomorrow I am going to the 20 year anniversary Postal Service Death Cab Joint Show in Seattle. What up? Oh, so excited. I'll be up there Saturday for the used concert. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's going to be sick. Uh, who is up there? Queens of the Stone Age were up there last night, I think. So I'm Morgan so Wallen is up there Saturday night, too. Or he's in Tacoma. Um, yeah. That's concert talk. All right. See you next week. Bye.